So, uh, hey, join me in this edit today. I think you're going to learn a lot. And without any further ado, let's get going. So we're starting out with this image. Uh, as you'll notice up here, I shot this at ISO 2000 uh, F11. One two thousandths of a second. I don't know why I was at one two thousandths of a second, but I was hand holding these images. I shot this at a local uh, uh, con flower conservatory, Phipps Conservatory in Pittsburgh, PA. I like this image. I don't like the background here, but I'll show you how I'm going to take care of that in Photoshop. And um, what I'm going to do, I'm starting out here in Lightroom, and what I'm going to do is just click this auto button right here and get me a good starting point, which looks pretty good, and I might just play around with this a little bit. Maybe just pull my highlights back just a little bit. Maybe I might open the shadows up a little bit more here. I always like to start with the auto because it's a really good place to start from, in my opinion. Because they use that Sensei artificial intelligence, which works really well. And I'm just playing with my whites a little bit here. Uh, I want to keep this image kind of open, so I'm not going to go with real real black black. So I'm going to maybe open those blacks up a little bit. I'm not going to play with texture. The vibrance looks pretty good in the saturation. I'm going to leave that there. The detail, uh, I'm going to shut my sharpening off. I'm not going to have any noise reduction, just a little bit of color noise reduction. It's just kind of the way I work. But I'm going to use uh, Topaz uh, Denoise AI to, to uh, denoise this because it's a very high ISO. Let me zoom in here. Maybe you can see. You can see that noise in there, right? Let me even, uh, let's see, let me, let's zoom into 3 to 1 so you can really see. See, yeah, there's a lot of noise in there, right? So we're going to use the wonderful Denoise AI to get rid of that. And I'm going to use a Sharpen AI possibly on this as well. So this is an Adobe Topaz workflow here today. And uh, I think we're good from there. Uh, lens corrections. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to always check on Remove Chromatic Aberrations and Enable uh, Profile Corrections. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And right from here, I think I'm just going to right-click it and edit in... Photoshop 2020. That'll load up Photoshop and then we'll go from there. Here we are in Photoshop and the first thing I want to do is denoise this. So I'm going to duplicate my background layer, Command or Control J, depending if you're on a Mac or PC. And I'm going to come up to Filter and let's launch Topaz Labs uh, Denoise AI. And uh, this is great denoising software and I, I have videos on this in the past and I'm sure you've seen them here. I'm just going to use the Denoise AI model here, and I am in manual, and I'm just, we can see here, we're zoomed into 100% here. You can see the noise here. It looks pretty good over here. I might just bump that noise up a little bit more, or the Denoise up just a little bit more. Just want to get rid of the noise. That looks really good. Maybe a 30. Right there, I'm just going to click Save. That's all I'm doing. And that is fast and that is simple and does a fantastic job. A really nice feature of Denoise AI is the fact that it also sharpens your image too. So let's go ahead and zoom into our image here. Because remember I mentioned I may add some extra sharpening to this image. And this is, this is a nice delicate flower here. I don't know what the name of this flower is here. But I shot this with a very shallow depth of field. Let me see. what was I? Where was I at here? I was at F11 here. So... It's not super shallow depth of field, but shallow enough here. But I got areas in focus. And this is important when you're shooting uh, with shallow depth of field. You want to make sure you have certain parts of your image in focus. As you can see right here is really nice focus in here. Here's a little soft. So I may run this in through into uh, Sharpen AI just to see if I can bring a little extra sharpness out of it. So I'm not going to duplicate my background layer. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, click on Filter, go to Topaz Labs, come to Sharpen AI, and we'll launch that. Inside of Sharpen AI, we have these three modes right here. Uh, sharpen, Stabilize, and Focus. And Stabilize and Focus are great. It Stabilize is really good if you had a little bit of camera shake. And this one works for me a lot of the time. And I'm going to start out with uh, Stabilize. And let's, this will update here. And it updates pretty quick here. And after it updates here... The more you're zoomed in, the quicker the update will be, by the way. 
it takes a little longer in the stabilized mode but yeah look at that right there it looks definitely looks sharper and then we have this little uh, we have this this vertical line that we can just draw across here and and then look at the sharpness in here okay I know this is a little soft here but that's part of the charm of this image here that's what shell the depth of fields all around all about but look at the sharpness right here that I've gained see here this is before but whoops has to update every time that moves. I moved that by mistake. But give it a second here. And now we're trying to move this over. But look how much sharper that is right there. So I'm really happy with that. And this is manual. I'm at 50 here. I might bump this up just a little bit more. Let it render out one more time. See if I can grab just a slight bit more sharpness out of it. Yeah, that looks really good and natural. And you notice I have no noise. This software is amazing. I'm just going to go ahead and click Apply, and that'll take us back into Photoshop. Let's do a little pixel peeping before and after. Uh, by the way, this was a uh, Canon 5D Mark II shot in camera raw. Older camera, but I love that camera. But look at that sharpness there with that stabilized sharpening mode. Fantastic. You see no noise in the background here. It's beautiful. And that area in here got sharper, which I was happy about. And up here, it's nice and sharp. I love shallow depth of field. Now, I'm zoomed way in here. Let me turn on the original layer. This is without uh, sharpening or noise reduction, but look at that. And I'll tell you, once I turn this uh, uh, denoise sharpen layer back on, wow, that excites me especially as a flower photographer. I hate noise in my images. Now, on this particular image, I hate the background here. And I'm in a conservatory, right? And there's some brick walls back here. And I don't like this light color back in here. So what I'm going to do is sample some of the colors from the flowers and kind of paint this in by hand. You'll see, and this is a technique I use. I really enjoy this technique, but it really helps me out. And I'll, I'll show it to you right now. First thing you want to do is come down and get yourself a new blank layer right here. Okay, and you want to get a brush. You can type B for your brush tool and change your brush size here. What I'm going to do is sample some of these colors back in here. Like, I'll start out with this orange right here. Now, the secret here is getting yourself a very low flow. So if you hold your shift key down and press 0, 1, you'll change that to, well, that's 1%. Actually, let's shift, uh, shift 0, 5. That's really low, 1. 1% is super low, but it lets you paint slowly. But the secret here is you want to blend things up. And just watch what I do. I'm going to leave my opacity 100%. So I'm going to start painting in here. Now remember, I'm painting on a blank layer. So I'm just painting some of this like an orange fog. Now the beautiful thing is the fact that I used uh, Topaz Denoise AI. I have no noise in this image. So it really makes this blending look really exceptional when I'm all said and done. I'm just going to go and sample some other colors around here. And again, I'm just painting in. But the low flow is the secret here. If I paint over my flower here, it's no big deal. I can put a layer mask on there and fix it. I'm going to get some of this uh, darker orange color over here and just paint in here. And nobody's going to know what I've done here. I'm just painting some fog in here. Okay? It's out of focus anyway, right? Shell the depth of field. Uh, this is a technique that I learned a while back how to do, and I, I've been using it for a long time. It's fantastic because, like I said, you always don't get the backgrounds that you want when you're shooting flower images. And this will change your world. You notice how I'm constantly changing, changing my, um, or resampling the areas where I'm painting so I can keep this looking natural. And I'll blend colors in. But that low flow is the secret to getting things right. And I might speed this up just to save, save a little time in this video, but you see what I'm doing here, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and speed, speed this up now. So I'm constantly uh, sampling areas to, uh, you know, sample the paint so I can blend things in. They'll blend in naturally here. Um, this is a great technique. Now, the thing I love about Topaz Denoise is I have no noise in my image whatsoever. So in the past, when I've used this technique, 
I'd have no, some noise in my image that I'd have to go back and add extra noise onto this painting layer. I don't have to do that when I'm using dope as the noise, which really saves me a lot of time. And uh, give this technique a try. It's really nice. But the secret here is using that low flow. If I've gone over the flower, I'll use a layer mask and paint off the flower. We'll, we'll check it out and see if I need to do any layer masking. Okay, let's just zoom into the image around the flower where I, where I painted around the flower and see if I have any issues that I have to fix. Like I said, if I have to fix an issue, if I paint it over the flower and it doesn't look right, I can just come down and add a layer mask with this layer mask icon. It would throw a layer mask on this layer one here. And then I could just paint with black paint and get rid of it. But everything looks pretty good. And as you can see, my paint job looks really nice. And let me zoom back out. And that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and um, I'll, sh I'll uh, hold the option key down and click on layer zero so you can see the before. So there's the before my painting and here's the after. Wouldn't you much rather, rather see this than this? It's a pretty cool technique. Next, we're going to take this into Topaz Studio 2 and have a little bit of uh, fun inside of there. Before I go into Studio 2, I got to pull all these layers together, and that's Shift, Option, Command, or Control E, and that just pulls all these layers together. Now I can come up here to Filter, and let's uh, launch Topaz Studio 2. Now we're going to have some fun. Uh, I love Lens Baby lenses, and I can kind of get a simulated Lens Baby effect with this, uh, with Topaz Studio 2, and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to come to Add Filter. Lens Baby lets you alter the focus of your images, uh, which is really cool. I don't know if you've ever seen Lens Baby, but look them up on the internet. They're really fun. Um, but anyway, I'm going to come to, where is it? Uh, focal Blur. Let's turn on the Focal Blur filter. And we have this Focal Blur filter here. And uh, this is the overlay. I'm going to drag it over my flower, like right here. Position it maybe somewhere around here. Now we can alter the size a little bit if we want to and the shape by pulling on these handles. We can even angle it, you know, if we want to. If we come to the outer edge here and see that little uh, uh, circular deal with the arrows on it, we can uh, alter the angle with that. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere right around in here. I'm going to bring the blur up a little bit more. Just a little bit. Somewhere right around there. And to get rid of this overlay, you can click right here. Now, I've the beautiful portion of the flower that was in sharp focus, I killed it, right? But that's okay, I'm gonna fix that. We're gonna come up here to the layer mask. And what I'm gonna do here is get a brush and uh, transparency is black. I got edge wear turned on. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna bring back my petal. See that? Just like so. I just wanna bring that back in maybe up around in here. Now again, I'm looking for that lens baby soft focus look. Now remember, I worked so hard to get this area sharpened right down here, so I wanna maintain my sharpness down here. Maybe up through here and through here. Let's go out to the edge there a little bit. Yeah, that's looking nice right around in there. Now I can change my paint to black, or paint to white, I should say. I want to make my brush a little bit smaller here, my radius, and I'm just going to fix any mistakes I've made right up around in here. I want to make sure that stays blurry right there. All right, I'm going to go back to black paint and paint along this edge here a little bit. Make sure I got that. How about down through here? Yeah, I want that to be a little sharp, maybe right at the base of the flower down here. It helps to whisper, you know, you kind of get in the mood when you whisper. Let's come up to the layer here, click the eyeball so we can see the before and the after. But see how that nice little extra blur looks really beautiful. Let's uh, click on this layer here and get our adjustments back up. Let's see if we want to add a little extra blur. To get rid of this uh, overlay here, just click on right here, that little icon right there. Now let's just, our blur is at 0.33, let's bump it up a little bit. Yeah, I might want to blur it a little bit more, maybe around, maybe around the 50, somewhere around there. Let's click this eyeball before and after, before and after. Yeah, that's looking really good. Let me go back to my layer mask right here. Um, make sure I'm painting with a brush with black paint. And I just want to make sure I have 
all this back in here. Yeah, right around in there. I'm painting with black paint. Uh, one other thing I want to try to do here is, I think this is part of the flower, the back part of the flower, right here in this section right here. Let me see if I want to add those back in. Yeah, I think I do. I think that looks pretty cool. Right on that edge there and there. And yeah, let me just click this eye one more time. Ooh, and also I'm seeing right here on this flower right here. You got to play around and get it right. You know, take your time. Just examine it. As I always tell you when you watch my videos, really study your image. See that right there? I want that in too. Make sure I have all this section in. Just in case I didn't get it. Yeah, I missed a little bit of that. And I think that little extra bit right there is going to help a lot. I'm going to go to white paint real fast and just make my brush a little smaller and just paint around this edge here just to clean that up a little bit. I think that looks good. I think I'm happy. We're done here. Let's go ahead and click accept. I think that's all we need to do here. And now we're back in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and see where we've come from. So I'm going to hold the option key down or the alt key on a PC and click on layer zero. We came from here and went to here. Pretty cool, right? I think I want to do one last thing, and that is a slight crop. I'm just not real happy with the crop here, so I'm going to come up to the crop tool. I'm going to leave, leave it in the original aspect ratio, and I'm just going to tighten this crop up a little bit. Maybe something about there. I don't want this dead center, but just slightly off center here a little bit. I think that's going to look nice, and I'm going to go ahead and hit return. And there we go. I like that crop. What do you think? There it is, a nice spring floral flower edit. Try saying that really fast. Hey, I enjoyed this one today. Uh, Topaz Studio 2, Topaz uh, Denoise AI and Sharpen AI, really great pieces of software, along with Lightroom and Photoshop. To me, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Topaz Labs are a winning combination. Uh, hey, and don't forget, I also have a 15% uh, discount for you if you click my affiliate link in the description below and use my coupon code David Kelly. You'll save 15% off any Topaz product. And I can't recommend them enough because, you know, Topaz and me, I love Topaz. I've been using Topaz for, for probably the past 10 years or so, a long time. And uh, I make a small commission when you uh, buy the uh, software using my affiliate link. And again, you're going to save that extra money, but it helps me and it helps me keep my YouTube channel growing. And I want to thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of my subscribers and all my viewers. Thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber with my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.